Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm answering a question number 11 from October 2021. This is actually from the GCE um, 9MA001 paper one, the A-level paper from the UK uh, at Excel exams. Sometimes I choose questions from this um, specification because they do relate very much to the international A-level. And sometimes I find a question that's a bit different um, in terms of uh, you haven't really seen questions like that before and um, you know maybe such questions could turn up in, in the IL exam as well so um, you know I just sometimes see a question that looks different so within our syllabus slightly different haven't seen questions like it before so um, I thought I'd go through this pa this this particular question just to um, in case you know you get a similar question in, in our exams and we can be ready for them. Now, part A of this question actually is something which um, you might, um, you know, have not studied since P2 because uh, in the old C4 and the old C34 syllabus, there was the trapezium rule was part of it as well. It was in P2 and it was repeated in P in, in C3 and uh, sorry C4 and also the C34 papers. You'd find questions about the trapezium rule um, since they've started the new P4 specification you don't f haven't found any questions on the trapezium rule um, now it is possible for them to give you questions which are from the p4 or sorry from the p21 and 2 syllabuses in p3 and p4 as they mentioned okay you are liable to be asked you know questions which do cover the material from the earlier units so i thought you know as, I, as part b is a question that i was really interested in which is how to integrate this expression and find the exact area of R. So, but I thought I will do part A as well, just as a revision in case of the trapezium rule, just quickly. Now it says, figure two shows a sketch of part of the curve with the equation Y equals lin X squared. Now this is not lin X squared like this. It's lin X squared like this. There's a difference between lin X squared like this. This means the lin of X times X like that, which is basically um, you know, you can think of this as the lin, lin of x plus the lin of x, which is 2 lin x. That's what, where the power law comes from. That's why you can write this as 2 lin x. But this does not mean that. This means the lin of x times the lin of x. So you can't use the power law for this. So these are two different things. This is not the same as this. They're not the same. All right, just a little side point before we move on. Now, we have to use the trapezium rule to, to find the area or to estimate the area under this um, curve. Now they've told us um, between 2 and 4 and they've told us to um, use the values in the table given. So basically what they've done is they have split up this area into 1, 2, 3, 4 trapeziums. Okay, so they've got, they've got one, uh, they've got an ordinate at 2.5. Let me make that a bit thinner. They've got it like they've at 2 and that, that's going to be 3, and at 2.5, and at 3.5, they've got the ordinates, so they've got, they've got a line going like this. Let's try and make it straight. They have a line going like this, straight up, and another one like this, another one like this, and they've basically split it up into these 1, 2, 3, 4 trapeziums, and we got to estimate the area you know, between there and there. So we've got to find the area of these trapeziums and add them together. And that's what the trapezium rule does. The trapezium rule is like something like this, h over 2, h being this distance between the parallel sides, which when we're given a table is basically the values, the distance between the x values. So we can say h here is 0 0.5. <clears throat> All right, so, and then you have times the sum of the parallel sides for trapezium. The area is basically... Um, that's A, that's B, and that's H, so it's H over 2 times A plus B. So here we have, you know, this trapezium, we have H over 2 times this time, this plus that. And for this, this trapezium, 0 0.5 times this plus that. So, you know, all of them will be similar. You have to add this and this to find the area of this trapezium, and add this and this to find the area of this trapezium, and add this and this to find the area of that trapezium. So you'll notice that these ones inside have to be added in both these two trapeziums, both trapeziums on either side of them. But these two lines here have to be only used in one trapezium. So you're going to have basically 
um, something like this. This this is like the the y value. Okay, that's how far this this line goes up. That's the y value of this line. That's the y value of that line. That's the y value of that line, and so on. Those are like the parallel sides, and this is like the distance between the parallel sides. So we can say the area is going to be h over two, which is zero point five divided by two times. You're going to have to add this zero point four eight zero five plus. You've got to add this and this. Okay, and um, you've got to multiply that by 0 0.5 over 2. Then you've got to add this and this and multiply that by 0 0.5 over 2. Then you've got to add this and this and multiply that by 0 0.5 over 2. And you've got to add this and that and multiply that by 0 0.5 over 2, which is basically this. these three are used in both the trapezium before and after them. But there's no trapezium before this and there's no trapezium after that. So this is used once and this is used once. These two values are used once and everything else these these ones in between are used twice so that's why you got two times 0 0.8396 plus 1.2069 plus 1.5694 and then that will give us our area which we then round to three significant figures so we've got 0 0.5 divided by 2 which is a quarter times i'm going to add these together 0 0.4805 you have to be very careful that you don't type something wrong in your calculator that's something very easy to do plus the last one which is 1.9218 plus then you're going to have two times two bracket then i'm going to multiply these one i'm going to add these ones together so 0 0.89 0 0.83 nine six plus one point two zero six nine plus one point five six nine four so I've got to close that bracket and then close the big bracket and I have my answer two point four zero eight five two five two point four zero 8525 five, which I round to three significant figures 2.41 square units so there's the answer to part a so as I said it's highly likely that we won't get the trapezium rule but just in case as a little refreshing uh, refresher of what we did in p2 and just in case they do ask us something like this I just put this in there but the real question that I was interested in that I wanted to explain to you is part B. Now for part B, <clears throat> this is actually the part of the question that I was actually, um, you know, concerned about and wanted to make the video about. Part A was just like, thought it might be a good idea to include something about the trapezium rule, but this is what I spotted and I thought might be useful for us in what we're doing here. Let me just get my other pen ready. Okay, so now, in this question here, uh, we have to use integration to find the exact area of R. So before we use the trapezium rule to find an approximate area for R, now we're using actual integration to find the exact area of this region. And we have to express our answer in this exact form A times lin 2 all squared plus B times lin 2 plus C, where A, B, and C are integers to be found. All right, so now... That means we have to find the integral. Whoops. We have to find the integral between the limits of 2 and 4 of the lin of x all squared with respect to x. That is the area of the region R. That's what we have to find. All right, now, this is something which we should know how to integrate, all right, but it's not something very commonly known how to do so. We can't use, for example, reverse of the chain rule, okay, because if we had, if it was multiplied by something over x, like 1 over x or 2 over x, anything over x, if x was in the denominator, we could, because we could then use, you know, it would be um, multiplied by the differential of what's inside the function, but here it's not. So we can't use the reverse of the chain rule, um, but we can do something, well, there's two methods that I've thought of. I'm going to show you both methods. One method is 
um, thinking of this as Linux times itself, Linux times Linux, just like you know something squared is. So I'm going to start off with that method. So we got the limits between four and two of Linux multiplied by Linux with respect to x. Now when you're using, we're going to use integration by parts. When you use integration by parts, one of the parts you call u, and you have to differentiate that, which is no problem. One of the parts we call v, and we have to integrate that, which is a little bit of a problem, but we'll go through, we'll deal with it. So first of all, du dx, differential of, of Linux is 1 over x. That's fine. The integral of Linux, so this, sorry, this is dv dx, and we have to integrate that. So the one part we call u, the other part we call dv dx, that's for integration by parts. The part we call u, we have to differentiate. The part we call dv dx, we have to integrate. So this has to be integrated. Now, how do we integrate Linux? I'm going to take a little bit of a diversion here. So I'll make a little, um, let's say, let, let make a little box on this side. Okay, so let me make this little box. It's like a little diversion. And I'll deal with the integral of Linux. So I'm, I'm integrating Linux with respect to x. Now, this is a, a standard type of integration that we should have learnt. Again, we're going to use... Uh, the product rule, uh, sorry, the integration by parts, and we're going to call one of those products one, one times in x. And in this case, we'll call u lin x because we know how to differentiate lin x, and we'll call dv dx one. So I've now kind of like just gone into this bit, I'm integrating that like in a separate little box there. Now, the differential of u du dx is one over x, the integral of dv dx is x. So when you use integration by parts, what you do is you multiply u times v. So you multiply these two together. So this is going to be equal to u times v, which is x times lin x, minus the integral of v times du dx, which is x times 1 over x, which is 1. And that gives us, if you integrate 1 with respect to x, x. So you're left with x lin x minus x plus c. That's the integral of x lin x with respect to x, uh, sorry, of, of lin x with respect to x. Okay, you call it one times lin x and then you use integration by parts. So the integral of this, which is we're gonna call v, is x times lin x minus x. I won't put the plus c until we've continued further. All right, so that's that part sorted out. So let's just make some more space there. So now we can do the same thing here. We've got to have the integral of lin x all squared with respect to x between the limits of 4 and 2 is equal to, so we've got u times v, which is all of this times lin x. So it's lin x times x lin x, let me make this a bit neater, x times lin x minus x minus the integral of this times that which is 1 over x times x lin x, which gives us lin x, and 1 over x times minus x, which gives you minus 1. Okay, so now we've got to continue. So this looks like there's a few parts to this. So I multiply these two together. That gives me x times lin x squared minus, multiply these together. That gives me x times lin x. And then I'm going to use the same technique of integration by parts. Well, I know actually Linux now, we've already, in, we've already integrated it, so I can just use this result. This is going to be x Linux minus x, okay, I don't need to put the plus c, and I've got minus, if I integrate this, I get minus another x there, okay, and I have my limits between 4 and 2, I can just put them in now. Okay, so now let me just simplify this before I start to put any values in, I have x and this Linux is all squared, minus x times Linux, minus another x times Linux, and that's minus 2x, that's actually plus 2x, minus, um, yeah, that's going to be minus and minus 2x, so it's plus 2x, be careful about that, that's a place where we could make a mistake. Um, and then you've got the limits of 4 and 2, these two can also be simplified a bit further before I put the values in. So you have x times Linux all squared, minus 2x times lin x plus 2x 4 and 2 so now let's start putting the values in so we have uh, 4 
Yeah. So now you have, yeah, sorry. So I'm just checking, I made a silly mistake. So that's four times, and you're going to have lin four all squared. And then I'll put four into here. So that's going to be two times four, which is eight times lin four, and plus two times four, which is eight, minus, now I've got to put two in place of those things. So I've got here two times, in brackets, lin two squared, and two into here, that's minus four times lin two, and two into here, that's plus four. Close the bracket. Now, we want to express everything in terms of lin two. All right, so those lin fours, I know that lin four is the same as lin of two squared, which is the same as two lin two. So I can replace the lin four with two lin two. So this is four times, now be careful here, because that two is squared, that's two lin two, squared so this this two has to be squared before multiplying by that four minus eight times and this is also two lin two i need to, everything to say lin two so i've got to make this into two lin two plus eight minus two lin two this is all squared minus four uh plus four lin two minus and minus is plus plus four lin two and that's minus four Minus four. So be careful about the signs. My, that's going to be plus. It's going to be minus four. Okay. So now, as I said, this becomes actually two squared, which is four, and four times four is sixteen. That becomes sixteen because that two is squared. It's like, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just write it out um, as separate s steps to make it clear. This is like four, and this is like times two squared times lin two squared. It's like when you have when you have something like a b all squared you can write that as a squared times b squared so this is 2 lin 2 all squared so that's 2 squared times lin 2 all squared and this is minus 16 lin 2 i've got 8 minus 4 which is plus 4 and i'll just i'll just write these as minus 2 uh, times lin 2 then bracket squared plus 4 lin 2 okay so now this gives you 4 times 4 which is 16 lin 2 and that in brackets all squared, and that's minus 16 and plus 4, which is minus 12 lin 2, and I've got um, minus 2 lin 2 all squared plus 4. So finally, finally, I can write down um, this as 16 lin squared minus 2 lin 2 lin 2 all squared, sorry, minus 2 lin 2 all squared, that's 14 times lin 2 all squared minus 12 times the lin of 2 plus 4 and there we have the answer so it's a bit long-winded but that's how you deal with such a question that's worth how many marks was that um five marks all right so there's the answer to that part of the question so we use integration by parts to do it now there's also an alternative method which i'm going to show you as well